But today, well, playing a similarly interactive deck. He's taking a decidedly different approach this go around with a red, white, burn. So no islands here for Colin. Again, Colin is uh, someone who has an open series top four with High Tide. He also top four Grand Prix Indianapolis, the legacy one with High Tide. So he loves to do that, and chances are we'll get to see that tomorrow. But today, he is playing against Alex Reed. Mono Black Devotion, a very tough matchup for this deck. Yeah, these Chil Chilbert figures to light him, to, he's gonna try to light him on fire this matchup. And it has, stands a good chance of working. <laughs> Ashelt's gonna come across here for two. Now the thing about Ashelt in this particular matchup is you know you don't expect it to live very long. However, if you're able to get in four points of damage with it, you have done your job. It's four damage for two minutes, and like another Boros Charm. Yeah, that's the plan. Now, if you only get two, you know, that is what it is, but I think the plan here is always to try to get four. We'll see if Colin can get two more out of it as he just draw a Magma Jet for the turn. Looks like he also has a Boros Guild Gate over there. So for this matchup, not trying to interact at all. Just take the opponent from 20 to zero as fast as you can. Devour Flesh will take care of the Zealot, so Chilbert's gonna go up to 22. But Mono Black has a very tough time against this deck game one. Yeah, so you have to figure that the burn deck will probably have found 20 points of burn by around turn five or six. Mm -hmm. So if you're the mono black deck, if you want the game to go longer than that, you're going to have to find life gain on a similar timeline. And what that looks like is Grey Merchant, Whip of Erebos, and I guess in a pinch it could be Devour Flesh on your own guy. So the mono black deck does have ways to gain life, even though Reed has already used one copy of Devour Flesh to take care of that Zealot. Now he's going to play an Underworld Connection, which is one of the poorer cards in this matchup. If you see him place yeah. it up there, Colin says, that's fine. The cards that matter for Alex here, Desecration Demon is very important. Yeah. It's a really fast clock. Colin does have a Chain to the Rocks for it if Alex had one, but the best defense is a good offense here for Alex. The best way you can stop yourself from getting burned out is to just try to kill your opponent quicker than that. It's a good sports reference. I like that. We're going to keep you around. Chandra's Phoenix is going to come in here for two after a Boros Charm. So eight has been dealt, 12 to go here for Reed. As he does draw a card for the turn, he is going to play a Temple here. So no Desecration Demon on this particular turn. A little scry action, however, and we'll see what Alex Reed is able to find on his fourth turn of the game. Yeah, he is setting this up nicely using the Temple before the Underworld Connections uh, so that he can try to dig with this draw. Looks like he does not. That's not the card he needs right now. I'm just going to pass the turn back over to Chilbert, who, with his Phoenix, he will untap that and his lands. Again, you mentioned the Chain of the Rocks that's in his hand. He also has a Magma Jet over there. Looks like he adds a copy of Ash Zealot, so let's see if he wants to deploy some more creatures. It looks like he does. Yeah, and I almost want to say that Colin has the Skull Crack as well, which will really... which will be very strong. It'll stop... It means Alex will have to have two life gain spells if he wants to gain turns. Because Alex didn't have early threats. You know, he didn't have... Night Veil Spectre, which is very important in the matchup. He didn't have Desecration Demon. The big issue here is, you know, does Chilbert have the fourth land so he can actually keep Skullcrack up? He does not. So if Alex Reed has a fifth land and a Grey Merchant, he's done, done a lot of the work that Chilbert has done. That's the big question here. If he does he have the fifth land and the Grey Merchant? Mm -hmm. This is it would be a huge opening for Alex because Colin will probably not... Colin will probably have two man up for most of the remainder of the game. It's a temple. So he does have a fifth land, but it does not come into play untapped. He does get to scry, which is obviously very good, but he would have loved to play a Swamp or a Muta Vault and slam down a Grey Merchant and gain four life. Now, Alex didn't draw with the Underworld Connections, did he? No. Chose not. Well, he got the Hero's Downfall last turn. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah so he hasn't drawn with that. He's been playing a second one. These guys are almost just placeholders for Devotion. Yep, that's really all they do is provide for Grey Merchant. As Reed is going to pass the turn back over here to Chilbert. Chilbert will be able to get in two more points of damage here with the Ash Zealot. And again, if Colin's able to draw the fourth land, that's where things actually get really terrible because he can start casting two spells in one turn. Yeah. As it is right now, as across comes the Zealot, Reed's going to go down to eight. He can still leave up Skullcrack here for the Grey Merchant. Yeah, you can see he shuffled, before he shuffled that Skullcrack to the front of his hand, he's very aware of how important that card's going to be here. Yep. Reed's going to go down to seven after activating the Underworld Connections for the first time this game. He's going to untap those lands, take a draw, see what he can find for this turn. Yeah, because all of Alex's life gain, with the exception of Devour Flash, are, is sorcery speed, Colin can afford to just leave up mana and always leave up this Skull Crack. Then he can Magma Jet on end step. Okay. But as we see here, he does actually get the Skull Crack off. It'll put Alex down to a very dangerous four. My guess is that we'll see Colin upkeep Magma Jet here. Yeah, just trying to go for the win this turn. I, yeah, I would imagine he's going to go for the win. So Grey Merchant does get trumped. Chilbert 
He also can actually do something even simpler than that because he has Chain to the Rock, so he can actually just Chain to the Rock the creature, attack for two, and then, and then jet. So, okay, yeah, so, so he just has he has the win already in hand. Yeah, he's got a couple lethal combinations, so get that thing out of the way. Chain Reed will consult his hand. Here's an attack for two, and then either the jet or the lightning strike will get the job done. It's yeah, pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward stuff here for the burn deck against against mono black devotion. Things get harder after sideboard depending on the configuration of the sideboard, but you know this is a really unique way of trying to beat mono black, where just a lot of their cards don't matter. Right. You've actually taken yeah, you've taken a lot of mono black's cards and made them not matter. Cards like Underworld Connections. I mean, it it's good, but it really takes a lot of time to be set up. As you see, yeah. Colin really doesn't care about that. He doesn't care that if Alex draws more kill spells. He just actually goes, he goes straight for the life total. That's typically how game one goes here. Now we're going to take a look at the sideboards and we're going to look at Alex Reed's first. The big question here is, does he have access to staff? He does not play the staff of the Death Magus in his sideboard. That's going to make this matchup harder. We saw that, you know, Yuya Watanabe and Shuhei Nakamura had played that in their mono black devotion as a nod to the red-white burn deck. That's not to say that Alex doesn't have options. He does have the full four for Rika's Cures That's in the sideboard. So that'll be pretty good in the matchup. It's a gain, life gain of two, and more importantly, it's an answer for all eight creatures that Colin plays. Yep. Um, outside that, he also has three duresses, which should be pretty good. He can fire them, if he can fire them off early, he can nab a burn spell before it's cast and more or less gain life. Yeah, the big question here is how does Chilbert sideboard? Because he has a lot of creatures in his sideboard. Four Fire Drinker Satyrs, three Fashino First Blades, and then four Satyr Fire Dancers. Fire Dancer is going to stay on the bench in this matchup, but I have seen players like Vidyanto Wajaya when we were in Los Angeles a couple weeks back board in Fire Drinker Satyr against these uh, mono black devotion decks. You could say the same thing about First Blade, where, you know, it has a timeline in which it's good, but, you know, if you're able to sneak in four points of damage with that, that's basically a Boros charm. Then he's got two more copies of Chain of the Rocks and two copies of Blind Obedience. I don't think those cards are going to play a huge role in this matchup. He already has two uh, main deck Chain of the Rocks, Dush Chilbert, and then the other two in the sideboard, but loading up on four of those, that's a lot of that card. Yeah, I mean, the only card you actually care about hitting is Desecration Demon. You And it's pretty important to hit it, but I don't think it's all important to hit the Desecration Demon. Um, you can you can tap it, or you can you can tap it with a Chandra's Phoenix if you need to. So, like, you want to leave some in, but I, I don't... The second one is almost certainly dead. Yeah. I think chances of the other two coming in are pretty low. And then Blind Obedience, uh, people actually using that for the mirror match more than anything else as a way to actually shut down a card like a um, like a Fiasana First Blade or Spark Trooper, which plays a big role in the mirror match, even though Chilbert doesn't have access to those on this particular weekend. So uh, we'll see if he wants to board into more creatures like a Fire Drinker Seder, because um, he does have four of those. However, he doesn't know that there are four Farikas Cures coming on the other side of things. Yeah, so the matchup certainly, I think, gets better for Alex post-board, but still a pretty difficult matchup. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this is why the Red-White Burn deck really did pick up in popularity. It's just because your matchup against Mono Black Devotion is quite good. It's not, you know, 100-0 or anything like that, but I, I think you are favored pre- and post-board, and that's really all you can ask for against what is arguably the best deck in the format. Yeah. It's, pr it's probably, it's very close to being even post-board, but you're so much of a favorite game one that having two even games post-board is a pretty good place to be. Yeah, it seems like you're almost favored, right? You just have to steal one of those games. Right. And yeah, as you did mention, your game one matchup, and you guys just watched it at home, it, it's, it's not always that easy, but it's pretty easy. I mean, Alex had almost an ideal start. He didn't have a Desecration Demon, but even if he did, Colin would have had the answer for that. He could have blind, he could have changed the Desecration Demon to the rocks, and he had more than enough burn to finish to, to finish things out. Yeah. So Colin Schilbert, typically known for playing high tide, again, a Grand Prix top four with that deck, also open series success with it. Taking a different approach here in standard red-white burn, but it is kind of a high tide-esque deck, if you think about it. Well, high tide doesn't want to interact, neither does this deck. Exactly. And that's, I would... Yeah, say that, that that pretty much is true. It's an all spell deck. It's not. It cares a lot about what it, it's doing, but not too much about what its opponent's doing. I don't want to make any promises, but I think we might get to watch Colin play tomorrow, play some high tide, just that's, for you. That'd be real exciting. Mostly because I want to see you in action commentating on what Colin should be doing. I think that will be fun. I don't. I don't consider yeah. myself a high tide master. Maybe I'll learn something in it then. The chances are, chances are high. Yeah. Chances are high. I know a lot of people like to watch high tide when it is on camera. So, uh, Chilbert's able to string together a couple of wins. We can see him in action with his uh, with his pet deck that he is very, very good at playing. So both players are going to draw their opening hands here. Reed will be on the play. He's on your right. Chilbert on the draw on your left. Mono Black versus Red White Burn. Again, very favorable for Colin in the matchup in general. Doesn't mean he can't lose. He definitely can, but especially when Reed doesn't have access to staff. Really got to like where Colin's at here. 
So it looks like Alex is happy, happy, and Shilbert is going to take a mulligan down here. Now, the one thing about the red-white burn deck is because it is a deck that's just looking to string together, you know, seven burn spells that are lethal, when it does mulligan, things get a little bit worse. Yeah, things get worse. It doesn't need too many lands to operate. Like, the danger with the deck is that land flooding is a very serious problem for the yeah. deck. Um, every land past land four is not particularly good. Yes. Fortunately, they have scry lands to kind yes. of mitigate some of that stuff, and mutavolts, too. Yeah, Skylands are very good in the deck. And he plays the four. I wonder if we'll see, uh, because the blue-red Skyland is showing up here, Temple of Epiphany, in the next set, maybe they'll play more Skylands and maybe dabble into blue for something. Like Turnburn? Yeah, potential for that. I mean, I'm not sure if that's better than Chain of the Rocks or not, but it could maybe move into maybe a, a small splash. Not entirely sure what they can do. It's Chilbert's looking at his six cards here. You could get, is it Staticaster? That would be pretty good with blue. Yeah. There's definitely some room to dabble. Don't know what we'll find as Reach is going to play a swamp and pass the turn back. You see Chilbert does yeah. have a Nash Salt and a couple of, looks like he has at least one land. There's a Boros Gilgate, so. Yeah, so no duress from Alex. Remember, he still does need, the. what's important on Alex's side is that even though he has all these hate cards now, he still needs a clock in the matchup. Yep. So without a clock, Colin will get him in the end. Here's Nash Zealot. Does he have a Farika's Cure for this? Or any removal spell for that matter? The answer is no. So Reed's going to take two. He's going to go down to 18. A pretty daring keep on Alex's side. No turn one play, no turn two play. I would hope this hand is loaded with action. I mean, he has to have a play this turn. It's a life main zombie. So he's going to see the grip. He's not going to hit anything. And he's not going to block Ash Zealot either. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he blocked. He'll be on chump blocking duty at best. You see Lightning Strike, Chain of the Rocks, two copies of Warleader Helix, and then a Temple of Triumph. So actually a pretty good mulligan here for Chilbert. Yeah, he's got some of the more heavy hitting burn spells. He has a four, four, and a three, so 11 points of burn plus a generic kill spell. Seems pretty good. Do you think there's any world where he's Chain of the Rocking that Life Fiend Zombie? I don't think he, he cares. You would care more about a Desecration Demon. Okay. Chilbert gonna take a draw here. Looks like it was a copy of Skullcrack that he picked up. Maybe an Immutable, I'm not too sure. It looks like it was immutable, so here's an attack for two. Yep, and as you said, Reed is not going to block, so he's going to have 16. Ash Zealot has gotten in for four points of damage. Yeah, he's gonna, I think even though it's mutable, he still goes with the Temple here, because if he played Mutavolt, he's probably not activating it next turn anyway. Yep. And once he gets to four mana, it's going to be War Leader's Helixes. Yeah, chances are he'll be lightning striking at the end of this turn. He's going to put the top card to the bottom from the temple and just pass it over back to Reed, who will untap. He will take a draw, and we'll see if he's able to find Desecration Demon, which is probably the best thing he can do this turn. Yeah, the biggest thing is I, you have to assume, you know, Alex kept a seven, and he didn't have a one-mana discard spell. He didn't even have a two-mana removal spell. Mm -hmm. He kept it based on something, and it wasn't Life Bane Zombie, I'll tell you that much. So I'm expecting either, like, a double gray merchant hand or at least a Desecration Demon here. Wow, another Life Bane Zombie. And this is just going to reveal the new card, which is Mutavault, which Chilbert points to. So this is very surprising. I wonder what seven cards Reed kept. You know, the big thing is if he doesn't have a discard spell in turn one, that's fine. But the fact that he hasn't, that he didn't play a removal spell is really surprising to me. I mean, if he has a fifth land and two Grey Merchants, I'm behind him. Okay. I'll, I'll allow it. Um, but I, for me, it, it has to be something, I think, of that quality at this point. Yeah, nothing short of that, I think. Yeah. Especially if Desecration Demon isn't your turn four play as Chilbert's going to fire away could, a lightning strike, put Reed down to 13. Could be Whip of Erebos, too. He that's has a true. one of Whip If he re next time he goes Whip, swing for six, that's, <laughs> that's that's hilariously good. Yeah, it's probably almost game over as Reed's going to attack here for two yet again. Or excuse me, Chilbert's going to attack Reed for two, put him down to 11. You see Chilbert with now a skull crack. Two good back-to-back -back draw steps. Jeez. Mutavolt being the fourth land to enable War Leader Helix and then skull crack to be able to one-up a Grey Merchant if that's what's coming this turn, or a Whip. Yeah, draw there by Alex. Yeah, he, he's going to need some some high-impact card. And I think he has the whip. Looks like he's shuffling something to the front. That would explain the keep. I don't think... If you have a whip and four, four cards in your opening hand, it's very hard to ship that in the matchup. He's going to lead off with Thoughtseize. Bold. Will Colin Skullcrack in response to the Thoughtseize? I would be so surprised if he did. What a call would that be? If he, yeah. if he did... Hold on. If he did... Could he kill him? No, no, he put Alex to eight. Alex wouldn't gain life. He would not get to untap and kill him. Yeah. But. Yeah, he'd go, he'd go, he'd go yeah, he would go, he would take two from the thoughts. He'd go down to nine. Skullcrack would put him down to six. six. He wouldn't be able to kill him. Wait, wait, no, no, that would. Skullcrack would put him down to nine. Down to, oh, yeah, you're right, actually. If he had Skullcrack in response to the thought, it would put Alex down to six. 
and attack for two. Well, uh, well Alex no would have to chump block. Yeah, there's, chump yeah, there's block. no guarantee that he would attack with all of his stuff. So. Well, he wouldn't. He, he actually wouldn't because yeah. he'd see like, oh, you have me dead. I see. Yeah. But that means they have to start chump blocking. That would be very. Yeah. I think Colin. I think he, that was an opportunity missed there. Well, now it's time to start firing away at creatures. So get that thing off of the table, says Chilbert. Whirly she looks that. I'm going to gain four life, which doesn't really matter a ton. One overall, because Life Bane Zombie is going to come across for three. More importantly, he's going to slow down Reed's ability to gain a bunch of life right now. Reed's going to gain three life. He's going to go up to 12 here. And now Chilbert has to do the thing he doesn't want to do, which is actually start sending burn towards creatures, even though he does have a chain of the rocks right now. Yeah, he's going to chain the Life Bane Zombie. to take Because right now, Alec, that's a source of repeatable life gain, and you can't really let that stick around. Um, already, there's going to be another life bane zombie whipped back at some point for three more life. Yeah, assuming that we do get to that point. That guy gets, yeah, it's exiled face up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery card. Here's three mana to Phoenix. That's a pretty good draw. So an attack here for four is going to put Reed down to eight. Now, if Reed is able to find a copy of Desecration Demon, that's actually pretty good here. It's not game over, but it's good. Demon or Grey Merchant are both ridiculous right now. <laughs> so let's see what Reed's able to find here. Looks like he may have picked up a Farika's Cure. That's also very strong. Mm -hmm. Anything that gains life right now. Remember, that last card in Colin's hand is a War Leader's Helix. So Colin, with is that representing lethal through lethal next turn? Yep. Not lethal through a blocker because of the life gain from Whip. There's a Duress. So there goes the that Helix. That is excellent for, for Alex. Is there a follow-up? Is it time to activate Whip? It's a Life Bane Zombie, so it's he's just another gonna More Life Bane Zombies. And he has four in his main deck, and he just left them all in there. I mean, I'm not sure it's wrong to leave them in. Um, you only you have to have creatures somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Take a draw. It's a mountain. So now here's the fun question. If he fires a Mutaval, are you blocking? Well, I mean, I think that's what... I think you leave you leave back Ash Zealot and swing with Mutavolt. Okay, he's swinging them all. Just yeah. kidding. I guess... He he, Alex is probably priced into blocking here. There's a good if Colin drew any kill any uh, burn spell. You can't go to two. It's yeah. just too risky. It's almost like you just can't do anything. So what's going to happen here is he's going to take four, but then he's going to gain three. He's going to go down to seven total. Mhm. Mm he take actually he takes two, then he takes two and gains three. Yeah, because so, of first yeah. strike. Yep. Net result, Alex is at 7. Yep. So 18 to 7 in the life total here. Alex is uh, beginning to stabilize. Yeah, he needs a creature to stabilize. He needs a demon or a gray merchant, but that should do it if he can find it. There's a swamp. This might just be a whip activation. I yep. think it is. Life Bane Zombie is going to come back. Let me see your hand. I want to see the mountain that you drew last turn. There that is. And now he's going to attack here for 3. So Reed's going to go back up to 10. Chilbert's going to go down to 15. The first of many Life Bane Zombies will be exiled now. So those get one-shotted from the whip. Mm -hmm. And Reed, as you mentioned, he just needs a card like a Grey Merchant or Desecration Demon to really turn this one around in his favor. There's a Lightning Strike draw on there for Chilbert. Lightning Strike, not a bad draw. It can actually just undo the whip activations. Right. So an attack here for four is going to put Reed down to six. And Chilbert's just going to pass the turn back after playing the mountain that uh, that Chilbert, or excuse me, that Reed knew about. Yeah, there's a couple cards. Wondering what the last card in Reed's hand is. There's a couple, a few cards that would have no effect right now. Among them, if he say had a Thought Seize, he's probably just not casting it. Yep. Looks at his graveyard really quickly. It's time to go whipping again. Doesn't really have much of a choice. It looks like shows a lightning strike. Doesn't matter whether or not Colin lightning strikes. Uh, it's probably correct for Colin just to not Lightning Strike here. Do you think he... Uh, I guess you know, the, only, the only difference, right, is, you know, if he it's, Lightning Strikes the Life Bane Zombie, he has to stay at 15 as opposed to 12. That, yeah, but he gets some more flexibility by hanging on to the Lightning Strike, which yeah. on this board, I think flexibility is more important than Colin's life total. And he is not going to fire off here with the Strike, so he'll take a draw. It's a Searing Blood, I believe. That's a huge draw. So here's an attack for four. Reed's going to go down to five. And if he does bring back a copy of... Life being zombie, I think it's lights out. Yeah. Well, two of them are exiled, and one of them has been changed to the mountain, so he's got nothing left in his yard okay. at the moment. Our 
I wonder what he's drawing. Well, the danger here is that a creature, Desecration Demon no longer does anything. Colin can tap it, swing for two, and Lightning Strike. Yeah. It's really Grey Merchant or Bust. There's a Swamp. A lot of those. Well, yeah, nothing to bring back from the graveyard from the whip. Two have already been used. The other one's chained to the rocks. And does Regis have to pass the turn back? He does. Wow. Maybe yeah. just running lands? Running lands, Thoughtseize, um, perhaps Underworld Connections, or... Yep. There's a Doom Blade. Doom Blade. That's rather unexciting. Yeah, Colin has five points of burn in his hand yeah. now. He drew Magma Jet for the turn. I don't think Alex is surviving to another untap. And he just says, all right, lightning strike you. That's going to do it. It's pretty easy. Colin Silver going to win this match over Alex Reed. Two games to zero. Red, white, burn. Get the job done over yeah. Lotto Black Devush. You see him shrug his shoulders and say, this is just what my deck does. Col Alex kept a hand based on the strength of Whip. Whip probably his strongest card in the matchup. And, you know, really, I, I think with the keep he had, 